Hello, I'm Richard Vobes, the Bald Explorer, and I thought I'd do an update or uh, an extra, as it were, to the Kent videos that we've been looking at, particularly uh, this one on the Medway megaliths, as they're called. You may remember, if you've been watching the little series that I've been up to with Nigel uh, Slater, is that we went to visit the uh, the megalithic site of Kitts Cotty House and Little Kitts Cotty. And when we went to, to visit, we weren't, you know, 100% uh, genned up on all the knowledge about it. Uh, sometimes, you, you know, you don't quite know what you're going to see. You don't know how much information is worth imparting. And we wanted also to track a lot of the journey to it to see how easy it is for people who want to follow in our footsteps to have a look if they want to visit them. So there was lots of information that uh, Nigel knew and, and I had a little bit of information to add. But after the event, after editing it up and getting it online and, and getting your comments and what have you, I thought it would be worth uh, going off and doing a little bit of research and, and then doing this kind of extra on it. So I've got some notes that I have made and if you're interested in this then carry on watching. If you're not obviously just uh, shuttle through to the next video on our Kent series. But these are important, these monuments, because actually there's nothing like them in the southeast. So these are the Medway megaliths, that's what they're collectively called. Now we only saw two but actually, uh, there are in fact seven of these megalithic chambered tombs uh, in the Medway Valley. So there's another five for me to go back and have a look at sometime. Uh, so the ones that we saw obviously were Kitts Cotty House. Um, I don't know why it's called House, but maybe it's because it looks like a house. Little Kitts Cotty, that's the one that had collapsed. The Coffin Stone is another one that we didn't look at. The White Horse Stone, uh, Coldrum Long Barrow, Addington Long Barrow, and something called the Chestnuts. These are all uh, megalithic chambered tombs, as I say. And they're all relatively close to each other, so that one, you know, if, I had, if we'd known that, we could have gone and had a look at the whole lot. So it's a bit amiss, remiss of us, really. Now, interestingly, the research that I read, this is some archaeological report, it's interesting because Nigel said, you know, the chances are that there's not been that much written up about them. But it does seem that there is quite a bit written up about them. And that's why I wanted to do this extra. So it seems that this area in the Medway and these particular monuments um, experienced really just one stage of construction. So in other words, all of these monuments were pretty much built at the same time in the early Neolithic period. Um, and these tombs are uncharacteristically tall. They're much higher than perhaps the ones that you would get in Wiltshire and, and, and other places, uh, in as much as with heights up to 10 foot. Um, they are, as I said just now, the only example of megalithic tombs in the southeast. So that's really, really interesting. And they're all clumped together. It's suggested that the intervisibility of these tombs was significant and important. Now, that word intervisibility means visible really, uh, all of them are, it, it, I think this is what it means, is that all of them are visible from each other. And that was a significant thing for the Neolithics, that they could see all of the other tombs. So that's interesting. Now, um, so as I said at the beginning, that there was just sort of one period where they were all built, but other prehistory activities did take place, but seems to have nothing to do with those megalithic um, monuments. So there were Bronze Age burials, there were Bronze Age gold deposits, and it's believed that there was a Roman temple on the top of Bluebell Hill, which presumably that's quite near to where we parked, because we parked at the top of Bluebell Hill. So yeah, a Roman temple up there. 
So let's go back to the one that we had a look at first, which was Kit's Cotty House, um, situated, as we explained, on the slopes of Bluebell Hill. Uh, Nigel was quite right that it is uh, aligned east to west with the entrance on the west. And that I was quite right to suggest that these were, in fact, sarsen stones. It seems to be that there is quite a deposit of sarsen stones in the area, although quite, you know, where they're quarried from or where they got from, I don't know. But um, that seems to be an important aspect. Three of these stones, three metres in height uh, on the top with a capstone above and then a, a, a blocking stone in the middle, as we saw. Now, little Kit's Cotty, that was the one that looked like a house of cards that had collapsed on top of itself. That's interesting because Nigel s seemed to think that there was uh, something not right there. It didn't work with his knowledge of archaeological and um, megalithic tombs. And what's interesting is that William Stukeley, he was the antiquarian and um, I think a, a, a reverend or a, a vicar or something back in the 18th century, 18th, 17, 18th century, he was born in the late 1600s. So he was dottering around. Very interested and very important man on the antiquarian uh, movement, getting people interested in um, these old uh, prehistory sites. He was a, a bit of a draftsman as well, and he drew the remains of Little Kit's Cotty um, back in the in the 17th century or early 18th century, somewhere around there. And it's interesting because they were in a less confused situation when he drew them. Now, people have looked at those drawings and it seems to imply that from that you can get much better information. And it, it seems to say that they were about this this tomb was about 70 feet wide which then gives the, if you take that, uh, it means it would have been quite a significant and large mound, presumably, again, seen for miles away. So that's quite interesting. Um, it suggested that the alignment towards the north of the Downs and the River Valley was also important, pointing, uh, I think, traditionally to mountains and valleys. And this is what, in fact, these monuments, all of them seem to do. Um, now, most of these monuments are on the escarpment or on the slopes of the North Downs. Um, and it's likely then that the settlement that would have um, been involved in creating these things would have been much lower on the on the flatter ground. Although, uh, as yet, no uh, sight of the um, the settlements have actually been found, but they, they must have been there somewhere. Um, so that's interesting. It's also suggested uh, that uh, some of the tombs were not housing human remains, which is quite interesting. Um, some have had bits of humans found, so I gather, but some haven't. And, it, and animal bones have been found. Now, that may suggest that these tombs had different purposes. So they may not have been tombs, but they may have been uh, megalithic sites for festivals, celebrations, uh, perhaps things to do with birth, perhaps things to do with death. But then the bones of those who died or the bodies of those dies move. For, for all we know, the bodies may have been put into one to decompose and and then the bones move somewhere else who knows how how they did things the other thing to bear in mind is as we, we talked about the intervisibility of it all um, that we know the neolithic people once once the um, the hunter gatherers uh, had had started to settle down and farm the neolithics were the ones that pretty much cleared a lot of the landscape that we that we see today uh, there were tree coverage all over the place, of course, wild wood, uh, ancient wood, and the Neolithics cleared the land uh, in order to farm. And the clearance must have been an, an important element and must have been pretty much um, all over in this area because these tombs, it seems, the layout of them, that wherever you go, you could see the others, or at least you could see them, presumably, from where the settlement was below. 
So there you go. Lots of added information about uh, those two sites. Five more for me to go and visit. I'll have to grab hold of Nigel and we'll go and have a look and scour around. And, and you know, going on site and seeing these things, very, very uh, important to get a feel of it, but also to come away then with all the questions that we asked and come back with some research. I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll get back to the others in our little jaunt round Kent, this mini series. I will be back, of course, to Kent later on. Don't forget to like. If you have liked it, give me a thumbs up. Follow if you haven't already. Subscribe. And uh, if you want to become a patron and help me to get out and make these videos on a constant basis every day producing one, then please, please help by going to thebaldexplorer.com and perhaps becoming a patron and uh, supporting what I do. But in the meantime, thanks for watching. From me, bye-bye.